Actually, my uh, social media manager is an expert on this topic, so yeah, we could defer. Yeah, I'm over regularly. <laughs> <laughs> Feel good. Of course, I could do that thing. Well, Boss. Yeah. Boss. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dr. Gary Modicky, and I'm a board-certified Beverly Hills plastic surgeon. And today, we're going to be talking about alcohol. <laughs> and maybe why you're never going to drink again. No, I'm just kidding. I guess Jessica Simpson, earlier in the week, released a photo of herself from four years ago when she was having a little bit of a drinking problem. And she was almost unrecognizable. And so I thought it would be interesting today to talk about the effects of alcohol, what it has in your body and your beauty, maybe some ways to avoid some of those problems and or just recognize what it can do to the body. And if we look at her now, when she's clean and sober, she's back to the Jessica we used to know. So I think the good news about some of this is some of the changes are reversible by changing bad habits. And I think work-life balance, I think that's important. So I think the first thing I wanted to talk about was just alcohol in general and why does it cause problems? And the main thing I think that a lot of people now recognize is something called inflammation aging. What that means is inflammation and aging and how they're related. So there's a lot of theories now with aging that it's related to inflammation in the body, chronic inflammation, you know, causing destruction of cells and overall just imbalance in the body. And alcohol, of course, is known to cause massive inflammation in the body. So when people are drinking, they're really leading to inflammation, i.e. leading to possible aging. And I think those effects are add up, you know, they're chronic. Just having a drink on a weekend here or there is not going to cause you to all of a sudden age. But, you know, people that are doing an excess and chronically, it starts to take a toll. And you start to see those changes in the body and you start to see the changes in the face and the skin. I think one other interesting thing about alcohol, aging, things like that is it almost mimics aging. As you're drunk, you're, you're not feeling well, <laughs> you're tired, you're lethargic, you don't look good, you don't feel good. And then also people tend to recognize that hangovers get worse as we get older, right? Uh, and why is that going on? And, and there's a lot of reasons for that. As we get a little bit older, our, our ability to metabolize alcohol decreases. Our liver gets older, we get older. So those, that alcohol sticks around longer. You know, it takes longer to get out of the body. So we have these longer hangovers. And then secondly, one of the major causes of a hangover is dehydration. And unfortunately, as we get a little bit older, bodies lose water as we get older. We can't retain it as well. So when we're older, we're already a little bit chronically dehydrated. Then we add in the alcohol and we're even more dehydrated, tend to have worse hangover. So all these things are sort of related. And I think people are pretty aware of these, but they may not be aware of what's going on. Why is this happening? Since I'm a surgeon, um, I thought I'd go through the anatomy of a hangover. And I think the one that most people are aware of is dehydration. You know, there's a lot of stuff out there about this. Drink water, stay hydrated. It's going to cure a hangover. There really isn't a hangover cure just out there. But I do think what's going on with the body is a few different things, and dehydration is the number one culprit, of course. Um, when you're drinking that alcohol, obviously you notice you have to go to the bathroom a lot, and that's because alcohol stimulates the kidneys to secrete urine, so you have to go to the bathroom a lot, and what's that doing? Dehydrating you. So a lot of things uh, about the, the symptoms of the hangover is from that dehydration. When you get dehydrated, your muscles are mostly made out of water. You're going to feel weak. Your legs may feel tired. Your brain becomes dehydrated. It starts to pull away from the membranes in the brain. And what does that do? Give you headaches. Also, the liver is working overtime. It's trying to process this alcohol and get it out of your body. And while it's trying to work on processing the alcohol, it can't do its other duties. And that's where all your antioxidants are. That's where you're processing sugar. So what happens is the liver is focused on that, now it's not able to, to release a lot of sugar in your bloodstream. It actually may become hypoglycemic or low in sugar. What does that lead to? Brain fog, weakness, dizziness, as well as the dehydration. So now all these things are starting to add up. The other thing is the alcohol itself can irritate your stomach lining, irritate the digestive tract, cause indigestion, make you feel nauseous. All those things, again, starting to add up. And, and secondarily, the nutrition factor is not digesting any food. It's not, you know, you're not feeling well. There is a lack of good sleep. We know that alcohol affects the way that we get into REM sleep or deep sleep. So even though you think you're sleeping well, you're not really getting good sleep. So now you're tired and you're fatigued and you're dehydrated. Because the body's trying to hold on to water, right? It's losing a lot of water. It's now starting to hold on to water. So how are you bloated and dehydrated at the same time? Doesn't really make any sense. What's the largest organ in the body? the skin. When you're getting dehydrated, it's trying to hold on to water. So what happens is you look bloated. You look bloated in the face. Other organs can become bloated. The intestines can be bloated. So now you're starting to 
be dehydrated and bloated at the same time, which is not a great combination. Long term, right, we're not going to hang over every day, but long term, what are the effects on the body from drinking that alcohol? So if we start to look at people, you know, like Jessica Simpson, I'll pick on Jessica Simpson, or we may look at other actors or actresses that have had some issues with drinking along the way. You can see those effects in their bodies and their face. So chronic abuse of alcohol or extreme abuse, uh, sort of like alcoholics, right? They're drinking a lot of alcohol over a long period of time. What effects is that going to have on beauty in the body, right? So number one, most people notice is that we're getting a lot of calories, right? So with the alcohol, there comes a lot of calories along with that. So we're seeing weight gain, we're seeing people looking poofy in the face, as well as the dehydration we talked about in the bloating, now you're getting a lot of calories. So people start to gain weight, start to look overweight. And then secondly, everybody knows that uh, drinking alcohol inhibition is a little bit lower, so people tend to eat more while they're get drinking, while they're getting more calories, and so we're in a vicious cycle now. Uh, we'll notice that people tend to put on a lot of weight when they're doing a lot of drinking. So anything that leads to chronic inflammation in the body is going to chronically age everything, every organ in your body. Now, of course, the most visible one is the skin. So we can't really see our liver or see our pancreas, what's going on in there, but they're also being attacked at the same time. What does that do? That affects nutrition. Again, balance in the body, everything going on, chronic malnutrition, chronic problems with inflammation. On the skin itself, we're gonna start to see that dehydration and malnutrition leading to wrinkles and, and fine lines and things that are signs of aging. That secondarily, that inflammation on the skin will lead to vasodilation in the skin. And so then you'll see people looking flushed in the face, having red face, uh, maybe even leading to rosacea. So all these things start to add up and you see that kind of classic chronic drinker face, right? Bloated, rosacea, redness, flushing, fine lines, wrinkles. So all the things we probably don't want. Again, don't, <laughs> if you're just having a few drinks here, there's probably not gonna happen, but that's somebody that's drinking a lot over a long period of time. One thing I do wanna say about drinking alcohol and not trying to be a Debbie Downer. <laughs> in most of things in life, I think, is balance, right? So on the other flip side of the alcohol is why do most people drink? Stress relief. And what does stress cause? <laughs> a lot of the similar effects that alcohol causes. So when we're doing releasing the stress hormones into our body, it's causing a lot of the same effects causing chronic inflammation in the body. I and mean, what does that chronic inflammation lead to? Fine lines and wrinkles in the face and all the other things we're talking about, damage the internal organs. The, the effects of stress are very well known and very deleterious, very bad for you. When you're talking about alcohol and you're talking about stress, I think there should be some balance there. There are other ways to relieve stress, of course, but I'm just saying maybe somewhere in there people could find a little bit of balance and try to get rid of some of that stress. I don't think it's an awful idea if they needed to have a drink on the weekend to calm their nerves and, and, and decrease that stress level. It's just when people are using it chronically and just drinking to drink, I think that's probably a bad idea. One last thing I thought that would be interesting to talk about because I'm a surgeon, there's a lot of things that patients seem to be confused about and that is what are the effects of drinking on surgery? And can I drink before surgery, after surgery? What, what, why can't I drink? What's going on? And I think after that introduction, you get some of the idea, right? Before surgery, if you're drinking, you're gonna be increasing the inflammation in your body. You're gonna dehydrate the body. You're gonna drain out the nutrients, cause malnutrition. So all those things aren't great for when you're trying to go into surgery. And that's why a surgeon's gonna tell you, don't drink a lot before you're gonna have surgery. All of those effects on the body can affect the results of the surgery or complications after the surgery. Your healing, all the, all, everything. And secondly, because the alcohol is overworking the liver again, the liver is what creates the clotting factors, the things that help your blood clot after surgery. So if you're drinking a lot before surgery, it can increase your risk of bleeding during surgery or after surgery because it thins your blood. So those are all the reasons the doctors tell you don't drink before your surgery. Now after surgery, again, a lot of the same reasons, right? The dehydration, the malnutrition, all the other issues we're talking about. And then secondarily and, and importantly is that alcohol interferes with the liver again. And the liver is what processes all of your medications that you're taking. So if you're combining alcohol and, and your medications, it can lead to some pretty scary things and, and interference with the processing of those, those medications. So for all of those reasons, that's why doctors are telling you don't drink before or after your surgery for a certain period of time. So I think the overall message about all of these sorts of things in, in, in life and, and as a general rule for me is to stay away from extremes. When we're coming to, to all of these things, nutrition, alcohol, stress relief, we're trying to find work-life play balance. We're trying to find things that able to stay healthy, look beautiful, not prematurely age yourself. All of these things are combined. 
if you're going to play a little bit and drink a little bit, make sure that you're balancing your life. You're, you're, you're staying hydrated. You're getting good nutrition. You're working out, keeping your body in shape, all right? Battling those calories and weight gain, keeping yourself in tip-top shape, particularly if you're considering anything like surgery. You want to make sure that your body is as healthy as it can so it can heal as best as it can. The thing that I always say, whether it's in regards to surgery or these sorts of things, stay away from the excesses, stay away from the extremes, and that way your life is much more balanced. I think you'll age much more gracefully and overall you'll just be much more healthy. And I think that those sorts of things lead to uh, better outcomes in surgery and also better outcomes in life. So as a gay man, I have to ask this question. Oh God. Um, so Lindsay Lohan has like always kind of been known to be a drinker. And I don't know if this is necessarily a question or more of a, a sentiment to share, but I thought it was interesting in the beginning that you said if you abstain from alcohol, like maybe you were an alcoholic and then you sober up, you can bounce back um, like Jessica Simpson did, right? Right. But what I think is kind of interesting is Lindsay Lohan has always kind of claimed sobriety throughout her troubles, hmm. but her... Aesthetic has never bounced back to once to what it once was and she looks in my opinion And I think in most people's opinion. She looks a lot older than she, I think she's like in her early 30s and she looks Sometimes like she's in her early 50s. <laughs> I didn't say that <laughs> you didn't say it. <laughs> uh, Well, come on. So everything right if you really push the body beyond its limits and it's probably I don't know if it's more than just alcohol or other things involved, right? So if you really beat the body up, it's never going to fully recover. And so everything you do has its effect. So if she's chronically, really excessively abusing things, it's going to take a toll on the body. It's going to take a toll on your looks. And some of it isn't reversible. So secondarily, I think she was doing other things, you know, plastic surgery or injectables and things to her face and really kind of just all over the map. That's why I say do stay away from just, <laughs> I don't want to bring everything back to plastic surgery. <laughs> um, but same thing, excess isn't plastic surgery. Some things are undoable, some things aren't fixable. So, you know, if you push the body far enough, no, it's not going to completely 100% rebound. Yeah, and I guess the part that I wasn't considering in that is Jessica Simpson has been pretty clear about the fact that she only had a problem with alcohol. Mm. And there is a difference in substance between alcohol and potential prescription use or recreational drug use or what have you, right? Right, a lot of those, are, you know, it's varying into other topics, but they all have different effects. A lot of things that come down to, again, malnutrition and dehydration, really gauntness and damage to the facial fat, different drugs, different, you know, substances are gonna have different effects on the body and beauty and aging. And some of those things are, are more permanent than the damages that can be with alcohol, and alcohol is more of a chronic, long-term abuse thing.